trying to be a woman and work through things and he wasn't ready. So then I was like, F it. Diddy finds himself under the relentless gaze of the media once more as his difficulties appear to intensify. The spotlight has shifted back to his private life due to fresh allegations, this time brought forth by his girlfriend, Young Miami. She accuses him of engaging in extreme behaviors, including organizing outlandish parties. This recent development is packed with intricate details that warrant a closer examination. Insider sources close to Young Miami, who's been dating Diddy, are saying that the city girl has decided to take a break from her relationship with him, especially since he's been accused of being involved in some serious stuff. A close pal of Young Miami spilled the beans to media takeout, revealing that she and Diddy had a chat recently, and both agreed to hit pause on their relationship for now. And this is what she wrote to her, if I wanted you to blank, Diddy would have had you on your knees. Diddy and rapper Young Miami first got people talking back in 2021, but it wasn't until June 2022 that they actually confirmed they were an item. Diddy made it official on an episode of Young Miami's podcast, Caresha Please. They were a thing throughout 2022, but then in April 2023, Young Miami made a point to announce she was single. Still, it's important to mention that since then, they've been in an open relationship. What the f is going on in that relationship that 250K ain't enough? Cause see some things, cause see some things. That ain't worth 250K, that's gotta be some dark sh Sean Diddy Combs is currently navigating through a significant career crisis, at the heart of which lies a highly publicized legal battle with his ex-girlfriend, Cassie. In a shocking turn of events, Cassie has leveled serious accusations against Diddy, including explicit S behavior, issues related to the LGBTQ plus community, PH, SA, and R. She expressed to the Times that after enduring years in silence and darkness, she is now finally ready to tell my story and to speak out for myself and on behalf of other women who suffer violence and A in their relationships. In response, a spokesperson for Sean Combs, who has been known by various monikers, including Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, and Love, strongly refuted these allegations, calling them offensive and outrageous. The spokesperson suggested that these allegations came to light following Ventura's purported demand for $30 million from Combs. The spokesperson for Sean Combs added, Ms. Ventura has now decided to press forward with a lawsuit filled with unfounded and sensational claims, all in an effort to smear Mr. Combs' name and secure a financial windfall. According to Cassie's legal team, speaking to the New York Times, she was presented with an eight-figure offer aimed at buying her silence and averting the lawsuit, an offer she chose to turn down. So far, attempts to get a response from Ventura's legal representatives have been met with silence. The lawsuit she has filed paints a dark picture of her time with Combs, alleging he exerted control over both her personal and professional life. The accusations laid out in the lawsuit detail years of alleged physical A forced SE and a constant threat of violence, revealing a deeply troubling aspect of their relationship. I mean, she was stuck in a decade-long cycle of abuse, violence, and trafficking, baby. Sean Diddy Combs, a titan in the entertainment industry and a three-time Grammy winner, is at the forefront of a sprawling business empire that spans a range of sectors, from fashion to music. Since founding Bad Boy Records in 1993, Combs has been an instrumental figure in the hip-hop world, working closely with legendary artists such as the notorious B.I.G., Mary J. Blige, and Lil' Kim. The lawsuit brings to light Combs' pursuit of Cassie Ventura, who was just 19 years old when she signed with Bad Boy Records and quickly rose to fame. According to the legal documents, it was during her 21st birthday celebration that Combs made a forceful advance, kissing her without consent, a move that underscored his power and influence over her career and personal life from early on. She also says that he got physical with her and forced her to be intimate with men of the night. You know how we call women of the night? Citing Combs' position as the founder of Bad Boy Records, the lawsuit claims that Ventura felt compelled to accede to his advances 
and offers of D to avoid jeopardizing her career. It describes how he enticed her into an ostentatious, fast-paced, and defueled lifestyle once their relationship commenced. Combs allegedly treated Ventura to lavish vacations, financed apartments for her in both New York and Los Angeles. The lawsuit argues that this extravagant lifestyle was meticulously orchestrated to ensure her complacency and compliance. However, as the relationship evolved, Combs purportedly became increasingly controlling and abusive, with instances of physical violence including punching, kicking, and stomping. The lawsuit further contends that he coerced her into carrying his guns in her purse on multiple occasions. The legal document portrays Combs as prone to uncontrollable rage, alleging that he compelled Ventura to participate in S-acts with male S-workers, capturing these encounters through photography and filming. The suit suggests that she was administered D before and during these incidents, enabling her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. Moreover, the lawsuit contends that Ventura was a victim of SA, as she was allegedly coerced into engaging in non-consensual SA in various cities. In a specific incident from 2015, the legal document asserts that Combs subjected Ventura to a brutal beating, leaving her with two black eyes, a burst and bruised lip, and a huge welt on her forehead, prompting his security guard and assistant to tears upon witnessing her condition. According to Ventura's claims, she was allegedly repeatedly forced to seclude herself in hotels until her physical injuries healed. It says that not long after she met him in 2005, when she was only 19 years old, he began a pattern of control and abuse that included. The legal filing asserts that Combs employed his companies to exert further control over Ventura's life. Despite members of his purported loyal network witnessing the alleged A, the lawsuit contends that they hesitated to take any meaningful action to intervene or halt Mr. Combs's reported behavior. The document states, her volatile and abusive partner, who also owned her label, thereby holding her future success in his hands, had gained complete control over every facet of her life. According to the lawsuit, Combs allegedly used the threat of additional violence and his extensive network to coerce Ventura into remaining in the relationship whenever she attempted to leave. In a specific incident, after Ventura briefly entered into a relationship with Kid Cootie in 2012, Combs allegedly retaliated by destroying the rapper's car. Kid Cootie has supported Ventura's account, confirming to the New York Times, this is all true. Did he threaten to blow up the rapper's Kid Cudi car in 2012 when he and Cassie were briefly linked? In 2016, James Cruz, the president of Bad Boy Management, purportedly informed Ventura that her single would not be released unless she complied with answering phone calls, as detailed in the lawsuit. By 2018, Ventura was resolved to end the relationship. Following a dinner where she expected to discuss the matter, Combs allegedly forced his way into her home and a her, according to the lawsuit. Subsequently, she left the home, which he had financed, returned the car he had purchased for her, and severed all ties with him. The lawsuit highlights the extensive harms and trauma endured by Ventura, necessitating intensive medical and psychological care. In pursuit of justice, the legal document states, Ms. Ventura therefore seeks justice for the decade of her life that Mr. Combs took away from her with threats of violence, excessive use of D, physical and psychological A and S slavery. The lawsuit seeks damages not only for lost wages, but also for mental pain and severe emotional distress inflicted upon Ventura during the course of her alleged decade-long ordeal. Years in silence and darkness, I'm finally ready to tell my story. She's speaking up on behalf of herself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. Cassie Ventura, widely recognized as Cassie, entered the music scene in approximately 2004 introducing a promising talent distinguished by a unique blend of alluring vocals and charisma. In contrast to her later association with Diddy, Cassie's initial foray into the industry involved collaboration with producer and artist Ryan Leslie. A proficient musician, Leslie discovered Cassie and took her under his guidance, officially signing her to his music label, Next Selection. It was within the framework of Leslie's mentorship that Cassie recorded her debut single, me and You, a track that ultimately soared 
to chart-topping success. Baby, tell me if you like it. It's me and you. However, Cassie's career took a notable turn when Diddy, the influential music mogul associated with Bad Boy Records, became a prominent figure in her professional journey. Acknowledging Cassie's potential, Diddy welcomed her into the Bad Boy Records family, a label well known for nurturing and promoting emerging talent in the music industry. Yes, it's a little bit of a switch up, a, a total energy change. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what was happening in that trail. Under Diddy's mentorship, Cassie rose to stardom with the launch of her self-titled debut album in 2006. The album, highlighted by the chart-topping single Me and You, served as a platform to exhibit Cassie's undeniable talent and magnetic appeal. Nonetheless, navigating the music industry landscape presented its own set of challenges and controversies. I'd rather lose a lover than to love a loser. So I'd rather lose like the love of my life than to love a guy that's just whack. And I think um, the experience of Criticism of Cassie's career under Diddy frequently revolved around the perception that she was sometimes treated more as a fashion accessory or arm candy for the music mogul, potentially overshadowing her role as a singer and artist. Despite possessing undeniable potential to carve out a distinct space in the music industry, the focus on her personal life often took precedence over her musical pursuits. Adding a new layer to Cassie's career narrative, controversy emerged in September of last year when Azealia Banks made explosive claims. Banks took to Twitter to voice her frustrations, accusing Diddy of suppressing Cassie's creativity and impeding her ability to release new music. In her tweets, Banks blasted Diddy as writing, lol, how about we boycott Diddy for ruining Ryan Leslie and Cassie? They still had hits to make and all Diddy did was make her unhappy and never let her release any music. She added, boycott this N for all the black artists he stole from. Poofed you and our pitiful idiots and BS politicians. While Azealia Banks' allegations lacked specific instances or concrete evidence, they sparked a broader conversation about the complex dynamics between artists and powerful industry figures. Diddy's undeniable influence in the music industry, especially through his label, Bad Boy Records, has propelled many artists to significant success. However, as suggested by Banks, such influence may bring its own set of challenges and complexities. Um, the experience of getting over it is usually pretty quick and easy if you really don't think that he's right for you anyway. Um, just keep it moving. The claim that Diddy limited Cassie's creative expression and impeded her from releasing new music raises important questions about the level of influence industry executives have over an artist's artistic trajectory. In a broader context, Cassandra Ventura, commonly known as Cassie, captured attention in the entertainment scene with a captivating fusion of beauty, fashion, and music. Born on August 26, 1986, in New London, Connecticut, Cassie's journey to fame has been been characterized by distinctive shifts, moving from modeling engagements to establishing herself in the realm of music. Always that easy? It's not like, always that easy. Right. But like if you were paying for everything for him, mm -hmm. or you were taking care of him, or he just didn't have any drive. Or Cassie asserted that the alleged freak offs frequently occurred in hotel suites, with venues ranging from the Trump International Hotel in Columbus Circle to L'Hermitage Beverly Hills, the London Hotel in Los Angeles, and various intercontinental hotels across the country. According to her claims, Diddy's assistants were purportedly involved in facilitating these events by supplying items such as baby oil and lubricant. The lawsuit states, Mr. Combs always supplied Ms. Ventura and the S worker with copious amounts of D before and during the FOs, Ms. Ventura was given ecstasy, C, GHB, ketamine, M, and A in excessive amounts during FOs, which allowed her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after an FO to recover from the excessive substances pushed upon her. Now apparently Diddy is not only involved with women and inviting them to freck-offs, but with men also. Sean Puffy. Combs, a veteran in the music industry with a career spanning over three decades, has often been linked to rumors surrounding exclusive all-male gatherings. 
Recently, Twitter users have engaged in speculation, suggesting a potential connection between Puffy and allegations of grooming involving Usher. A TikTok video has emerged, compiling interviews with various rappers and singers discussing the rumored all-men parties hosted by Sean Puffy Combs across different platforms. The video kicks off with Jamie Foxx sharing insights into Combs' alleged secret gatherings, hinting at their involvement with younger men. So I followed him the whole time. I remember watching Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel, filming this, and it's a pool party that is ridiculous money. Rappers like 50 Cent have taken jabs at Puffy, especially regarding the reported all-men parties he supposedly organized, which allegedly involved younger men, including Usher's experiences at Flavor Camp. Usher opened up about his early days in New York City while living with Puff Daddy as a teenager in an interview on The Howard Stern Show, shedding light on the parties and festivities held at the so-called Flavor Camp. In the Howard Stern interview, Usher briefly touched on his exposure to the lifestyle without delving into specific details. He alluded to the exuberant nature of these events, expressing uncertainty about fully participating and indulging in them. I moved to New York City and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. Upon signing with LaFace Records as a teenager, Usher found mentorship in Sean Combs, also known as Puff Daddy. At the age of 14, Usher relocated to New York to collaborate with Diddy, blending work and social experiences. Beyond their professional endeavors, Diddy allowed Usher to partake in his lavish gatherings, aiming to infuse the young singer with a more edgy persona. In a 2011 interview, Usher, who currently serves as a mentor to Justin Bieber, shed light on Diddy's desire for him to embrace a more edgy image. Reflecting on the experience, Usher acknowledged that while Diddy's vision may not have led to immediate success with his first album, it set the stage for an enduring 18-year career. This insight guides Usher in his mentorship of Justin Bieber, emphasizing the importance of making music relevant to the current times. Additionally, L.A. Reid, the CEO of LaFace Records, disclosed that Diddy played a pivotal role in persuading him to retain the young Usher on the label when considerations were made to drop the budding star. He said, I wanted to drop him. I wanted to be out of business with him. I broke his heart. I broke his mother's heart. It was a very tough period in both our lives. He added, then someone said to me, don't be a fool. Don't sell your stock in Usher. He's still gonna be a star. He's everything you thought he was the day you signed him. And that person was Diddy. Michael Jackson played a pivotal role in shaping Usher's artistic evolution. And Usher openly acknowledged the profound impact of the King of Pop on his career. One poignant moment in their connection occurred when Usher performed Larry Grossman and Buzz Kohan's Gone Too Soon at Michael Jackson's memorial service in 2009, following the icon's untimely death. Usher described this experience as one of the most conflicted moments of his life, highlighting the emotional weight and honor of paying tribute to his mentor and musical inspiration. Reflecting on that moment, Usher said, that was the hardest, yet most gratifying moment of my career. The song summed up what people were feeling as nobody believed Michael had passed. He was such an iconic figure. Icons like him live forever. Throughout his illustrious career, Usher has achieved remarkable success, securing nine and one songs on the prestigious Billboard Hot 100 chart. A significant milestone occurred with his fourth album, Confessions, where Usher made history as the third artist ever to simultaneously hold three songs on the Hot 100. This album marked a turning point in his career, selling a remarkable 1.1 million copies in its inaugural week and earning Usher the Grammy Award for Best Contemporary R&B Album. So you never leave. Confessions further solidified its place in music history by becoming the second best-selling album in the United States during the 2000s decade. The album's phenomenal success is evident in its RIAA Diamond certification, signifying sales of over 10 million copies in the U.S. alone and a global sales figure of 20 million copies. Usher's impact on the music scene is underscored by his impressive tally of over 50 appearances on the Billboard Hot 100, earning him the well deserved moniker of the Prince of R&B. However, despite Usher's achievements, there have been persistent rumors circulating online. 
Some claim that Sean Diddy Combs may have given Usher Raymond a S transmitted disease, STD, when he was just 15 years old. The source of these rumors is unclear, but some speculate that they may stem from Usher's admission that Diddy used to take him to wild parties when he was a young teen. And you're gonna go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop. There is no credible evidence supporting the claim that Diddy gave Usher any S transmitted diseases, STDs, or engaged in any S contact with him. Usher has been embroiled in legal battles, facing accusations of infecting partners with herpes, but he has consistently denied these allegations and resolved most cases through out-of-court settlements. Regarding Diddy, there is no public comment on the rumored relationship with Usher. Diddy himself has encountered legal issues, including his involvement in a nightclub shooting in 1999 and an A on his son's football coach in 2015. Much evidence has implied that Diddy coerced Usher into participating in inappropriate activities or had an obsession with specific themes. There was a lawsuit by a young woman, a fan, who slept with Usher after meeting him at one of his shows. The woman won a court victory proving that Usher knowingly gave her an STD. There is a video out with P. Diddy, Usher and Kevin Hart, where Diddy lets it slip out, probably intentional to embarrass Usher, that the two of them wake up in the morning and fight over cornflakes. P. Diddy implies that he and Usher spent the night together, and Kevin Hart, supposed to be embarrassed, quickly changes the subject. Yet this one Usher is a nasty man. He has given STDs to several women, probably men also, and he has a court order against him not to spread his STD again or face jail time. Responded to the lawsuit from the woman who claims that uh, they hooked up a couple of times this year and that she actually he gave her herpes yes. she says yes that's what she said His answer. So. diddy renowned for guiding usher is now facing accusations of mistreatment and inappropriate influence on justin bieber during their early years together it is alleged that diddy spent an extended 48 hours with justin bieber when the pop sensation was still a teenager given diddy's controversial history involving teenage boys concerns have Risen regarding his interactions with Justin. Reports indicate that Diddy showcased a Ferrari to Justin and made promises of allowing him to drive it once he turned 16, even though Justin was only 15 at that time. Additionally, there are claims that Diddy offered Justin a mansion, supposedly available to him when he turned 18. As you turn 16, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you rock because every time you right. yeah, it's going to be yours. It's essential to highlight that there is no concrete evidence supporting these allegations, yet they do prompt inquiries into Diddy's motivations behind lavish gifts. Speculation suggests that these actions may have aimed to involve Justin in age-inappropriate activities, stressing the importance of proper parental guidance for young celebrities, particularly in potentially vulnerable situations becomes crucial. However, after this, his future relationships with older men such as Carl Letts quite raised questions. In November 2020, Vanity Fair reported that Pastor Carl Lentz, a well-known religious figure affiliated with the celebrity-frequented Hillsong Church, was terminated. The church, which has drawn in notable figures such as Kourtney Kardashian, Chris Pratt, and the celebrity couple Justin Bieber and Hailey Bieber, disclosed that Lentz had officiated the baptism ceremony for the Bieber-Baldwin duo. I can just speak from my own life. God has never called me at a good time. That is exactly how you should be living right now. On November 4, 2020, Hillsong Church issued an official statement announcing the termination of Pastor Carl Lentz. The statement referenced ongoing discussions about leadership issues, breaches of trust, and the recent disclosure of moral failures as the grounds for Lentz's dismissal. Although the statement did not provide a detailed information regarding the nature of the moral failures, Lentz addressed the situation on his Instagram account. In a post featuring a photo of himself, Laura, and their three children, Lentz confessed, I was unfaithful in my marriage, the most important relationship in my life. This failure is on me, and me alone, and I take full responsibility for my actions. Despite the negative publicity surrounding Lentz, who was previously a frequent subject of tabloid headlines due to his close friendship with Bieber, the depth of their connection has become apparent. 
While Lentz is no stranger to having celebrity friends, his relationship with the Canadian-born pop star seems to have had a more profound impact. It's okay. Oh, why you guys make me so nervous? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> The enduring friendship between Justin Bieber and Pastor Carl Lentz traces back to approximately 2014, according to GQ. The connection originated when another pastor at Hillsong Church sought Lentz's help with a young man in need, none other than Bieber, during his headline-grabbing tumultuous phase. It was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. In an effort to help Bieber get back on track, the pop star actually lived with Lentz and his family for a month and a half in 2014, according to GQ. During this time, there's a humorous anecdote about Bieber deciding he wants to be baptized at 2 a.m. Lentz, unable to find an available pool in New York, reached out to his friend Tyson Chandler, a seven-foot-tall NBA player for the New York Knicks, who arranged for a custom-made bathtub. Thus, Bieber was baptized in Chandler's bathtub, with Lentz conducting the ceremony. Wearing supreme sweaters. Just wearing sweaters. <laughs> Just living the dream. We've been living the dream. The friendship between Bieber and Lentz proved to be mutually beneficial, with Lentz contributing to the transformation of Bieber. Bieber's public image, and Bieber bringing significant star power to both Lentz and the church, as noted by Vox. In 2019, Lentz further solidified his role in their lives by officiating Bieber and Haley Bieber's wedding, according to the Daily Mail. What does dreams, that look like? Dreams, that dream being, look dreams like? are being It lived. looks like Ephesians 320, to be honest with you. However, Lentz's recent scandal has left the future of their relationship uncertain. While Baldwin has reportedly unfollowed Lentz on Instagram, Bieber has not. This thing raised the eyebrows of many people questioning their relationship. People believe that she unfollowed him after knowing the news of him baptizing Justin in a bathtub. But some also believe that she unfollowed him when he broke the news of him being unfaithful to his wife. This failure is on me, and me alone, and I take full responsibility for my actions, Lentz said in the lengthy message. I now begin a journey of rebuilding trust with my wife, Laura, and my children, and taking real time to work on and heal my own life and seek out the help that I need. I am deeply sorry for breaking the trust of many people who we have loved serving, and understand that this news can be very hard and confusing for people to hear and process. Australia's ABC E News detailed that the commission identified a conflict of interest in Brian's dual roles, both personal and professional, while addressing the situation. It concluded that Houston did not adhere to proper procedures, ultimately failing the victim in handling the matter appropriately. However, people watched this incident with a changed perspective. They believed that this case involved Justin and Carl, and Carl was responsible for M. Justin. And it might be possible that Carl must have demanded financial aid to Justin and him being a kid let him do whatever he wanted to do with him. Carl is rumored to have a romantic involvement with Justin. And there's another prominent figure in the music industry allegedly linked romantically to Justin as well, Diddy. Reports and accusations have surfaced regarding Diddy and his connections with both Usher and Justin Bieber. Yeah, so as soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you rock this every time. Right? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, this will be yours. <laughs> It has been seen that Diddy has been involved in luring and making uncomfortable young artists for his own desires. This was seen in one of his meetings with the rapper Fabulous. Most people aspire to attend after parties where celebrities gather, seeking the opportunity to interact with industry insiders. Despite Fabulous having attended numerous events over the years, it seems that he believes certain parties have fallen short of the expectations set for them. <laughs> However, these revelations somehow prove that Diddy can do anything to manipulate artists, and that is why it appears Young Miami had enough of everything. One person on the internet wrote, He said buck full crazy, as in buck wild. Poor Justin, though. Feel so sorry for these kids exposed to too much too quick. I just saw a vid of Justin saying he wanted to protect Billie Eilish so she wouldn't have to go through what he went through. He got emotional. Poor kid. Something definitely happened somewhere. Another one added, It's innocent until proven guilty. 
but this looks sketch straight up. Usher, Beaver, Jamie Foxx speaking out, plus other allegations. What happens in the dark always comes out in the light. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.